would like to welcome everybody to the August 22nd meeting of the Newburn Board of Aldermen. At this time, the prayer tonight will be given by Alderman Mitchell. Too many members of our armed forces have lost their lives this year or had their lives irreparably altered by, by life-changing injuries in aircraft crashes, in ship collisions, in combat operations, and in training evolutions, both in this country and overseas. I'd like for us to take a minute to honor their sacrifice and to pray that Almighty God grant peace that passes all understanding to them and to, our, to their families. Amen. Amen. At this time, I have a pledge of allegiance to the flag of our country. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk, would you call the roll? Alderman Blackiston? Here. Alderman Taylor? Here. Alderman Mitchell? Here. Mayor Outlaw? Here. Alderman Kinsey? Here. Alderman Odom? Here. Alderman White? Here. Okay, the first item tonight is the consent agenda, items three through five. May I move we approve the consent agenda? Correct. Second. Motion by Alderman Odom, seconded by Alderman Mitchell. Is there a discussion? All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All opposed the same. Motion carries. Item number six is the presentation of the 2017 Veterans Stand Down. Mr. Stevens. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, members of the board, at this time I would like to ask uh, Levy Wallace Singleton, uh, who is the Executive Director of Veterans Organic Garden. Uh, she's going to provide a presentation for us on this year's upcoming Veterans Stand Down. So at this time, Turn it over to them for their presentation. And I think they have something sitting in front of you too that is also for uh, supplement. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. First, I'd like to uh, apologize for sitting in front of you. Um, I recently found out I'm going to be. Uh, having knee replacement surgery, so <laughs> hopefully you'll bear with me. All right. My name is LeVe Wallace Singleton, Executive Director of Veterans Employment Base Camp and Organic Garden, and I am joined by Ms. Rashima Walker, who is a Disabled Veteran Outreach Program Specialist at NC Works Career Center. The Veteran Stand Down is an outreach to homeless veterans but provides numerous services to all veterans and active duty members. At the first stand down program in 2014, we received valuable support from the city of New Bern's mayor, aldermen, and Craven County commissioners. Our main goal during the veteran stand down is to provide veterans affairs benefits, health services, and establish a self-help network. The original Stand Down for Homeless Veterans was modeled after the Stand Down concept used during the Vietnam War to provide a safe retreat for units returning from combat operations. In addition, basic needs are met through provisions of hot food, clothing, and physical and mental health care from the civilian and military community. Agencies like the Red Cross and Veterans Affairs Homeless Veteran Outreach Program have been constant partners. Stand downs serve as a means of helping communities address their plan to end homelessness, as well as promoting awareness and encouraging dialogue on issues relating to homeless and at-risk veterans. By 2015, we had completed most of the construction at the Veterans Organic Garden and made use of the facilities at the Stanley White Recreation Center as well. We also expanded our program to two days with two outstanding speakers, Congressman Walter Jones and former Director of North Carolina Division of Veterans Affairs, Pantano. 
Another consistent supporter has been Mr. Bryant and Craven Community College's barber class, along with military missions in action with clothing and hygiene items. In 2016, we moved the event to the New Bern National Guard Armory so we would not have the constant worry about the weather and service providers set up. Ms. Theresa Lee has been a steadfast supporter of veterans' issues and will continue assisting our program this year as our Mistress of Ceremonies. We have a variety of organizations from Marine Corps Air Station Cherry Point, which have also assisted with the veteran stand down. During last year's program, we drew attention to the 22 veteran suicides a day by having a 22 push up challenge. Another supporter from Marine Corps Cherry Point Base has been the Single Marines and Sailors Program, which has helped in a variety of ways. Rapid rehousing is one of the critical factors when assisting homeless veterans, and we ensure that it is a mandatory stop for the homeless veterans. But we also have fun during the event with veteran appreciation raffles and prizes for any veteran to win just for attending the event. As an additional benefit, we serve a free breakfast snack and grilled lunch during the four hour event. There are many civic organizations like Elks Lodge number 764 that have supported the veteran stand down by providing clothing and financial assistance. And of course, there are always the barbers. Veterans have the opportunity to connect with other veterans, veterans organizations, volunteers, and service providers. Craven County Senior Services also offers veterans assistance to an aging military population. VFW Post 2514, DAV Chapter 40, and Craven County's Veterans Council have provided assistance and offer veterans a hand up, not a hand out. Military missions in action with their core values of accountability, dedication, honor, integrity, and patriotism will be returning with an immense amount of stand down items. So this year we are back to two days, September 8th in New Bern at the National Guard Armory and September 9th in Havelock at the New Beginnings Ministry of Faith Campus. Along with the normal services, we are providing baskets for veterans with service dogs and transportation to connect veterans to over 43 different organizations on Friday and 35 on Saturday. So needless to say, we are very excited about the upcoming program that we have scheduled for both days at both locations with an expected turnout of 200 veterans. So again, thank you for your support and we hope to see you there. We've also included in your packet a resource guide that will be handed out to each of the veterans when they attend the stand down. So thank you. Thank you. Does the board have any questions or anything? We uh, really appreciate all of what you're doing here in Newburn. We actually were talking about much about your garden Thank this you. afternoon. And tell us, update us on your, the, the garden. The garden is doing really well. Um, right now, we have a ton of okra, <laughs> some tomatoes, and a few squash. Um, we are looking at expanding um, to bees because we'd like to do some veteran honey for next year. Um, our children's program is also expanding because I feel like if you can catch the children young and get them gardening, they'll do more healthy eating. And I do get asked sometimes about your vegetables, who, who is entitled to receive those vegetables? Would you like to update the, the public? Yes. We have a farmer's market every Saturday from 10 to 1, um, and we do not charge a, a set price. It is by donation only. We also provide um, produce to some of the local churches and the uh, New Bern Senior Living, the Senior Center. And so that's on Saturday behind Stanley White from what time to what time? 
from 10 till 1. Do you ever have other vegetables that come in that you're not producing that, that is distributed, that gets distributed? or? Not yet. We're trying to uh, develop some links through Peloton Ministries mm -hmm. and also uh, with the Craven Terrace Green Team. Yeah. That's one of the things that we're looking at so that we can get their youth group involved in our garden. Well, great. Well, great. I thank you for doing all you're doing. Yes, sir. Ms. Singleton. Yes, sir. Ms. Singleton, you said every, every Saturday? Yes, sir. Unless it rains or it's a holiday, I'm saying. We try not to work in the rain. <laughs> but, um, yes, every Saturday from 10 till 1, uh, and it's by donation only. We don't turn anyone away. And if anybody's out that way, just, uh, I know, Lovie, I've caught you out there quite a few times, uh, yes. other than those hours. I know you, you're out there working quite yes. a bit. And, <laughs> you know, uh, I know that when you started it several years ago, we, nobody had any idea what, what would happen, and I think you've really done a great job. Thank you so and much. It's really enjoyable it. going out there. Thank you. Right. Okay. This time we're going to have a presentation on the realignment of Dunn Street, Mr. Stevens. Thank you, Mayor, members of the board. Uh, as Chrissy makes her way up to the podium for the presentation, um, uh, just kind of a brief overview. As you recall, we've had some discussions in the past regarding the uh, railroad crossing improvements at both Guyon Street and North Craven Street. Uh, both of these are being proposed to improve the safety of those intersections, uh, both of them not having any kind of warning lights or railroad crossing uh, arms uh, currently. Uh, NCDOT and North Carolina Railroad have approved the Dunn Street realignment design and are ready to proceed. We wanted to brief the board tonight on that realignment uh, so that we could potentially get the board's approval and consideration for this uh, and moving forward before we uh, enter into any kind of agreements with NCDOT. So at this time, I want to turn it over to uh, this caller uh, to do the presentation. Good evening, Mayor and members of the board. Uh, Mark gave a thorough introduction, so I'll just jump right into the slides. Um, as Mark indicated, and as I'm sure you were aware, uh, the city has requested crossing signals where the railroad tracks cross uh, North Craven Street and also Guyon Street, um, and I'll update you on Guyon Street as well, but um, really this, this presentation is about the North Craven crossing. When we started looking at the, at the overhead and the original plan uh, by the railroad folks and DOT, we had questions about the safety because Dunn Street is so close to the railroad tracks and then how we might be able to improve the safety. And so we were brainstorming some ideas and came up with the idea of potentially realigning Dunn Street to um, assist in that, that turning radius and the safety precautions. And I'll explain that when I pull up the map. So really what we're talking about for that intersection is the difference between the top left picture, which is just signals and a sign and then the bottom right picture, which would include the gates and arms that would be able to come down and, and actually block the intersection. Top left being a warning, top right being a physical uh, blocking of the intersection. Bottom right, sorry. So the area in question is, is in the box in red. Um, the entire area is uh, one of our city parks at that corner between Pasture and North Craven and Dunn Street. Um, a fairly large park, and you can see Dunn Street at the bottom right of that box. Um, the railroad tracks are actually right up against uh, Dunn Street as you head towards North Craven. If you're on North Craven looking north, this is what you currently see, um, which is one railroad sign and then railroad tracks. Um, not a lot of uh, immediate light there. It can get very dark in the evenings. I know that was one of the concerns that led to our pursuing um, some more signaling at that intersection. And then this is North Craven looking south. Um, you can also see just the wide openness of that intersection and the potential danger if there were to be a train coming or on the tracks. A lot of times the trains will stop in that area even after dark and can be difficult to see. And then one more view, this is Dunn Street. As you approach North Craven, you can see the proximity of the tracks to Dunn Street. And this also gives you a good understanding of what the problem is. You cannot, there's no room to put crossing arms between Dunn Street and the railroad tracks. So you cannot prevent someone from making a right turn onto the tracks from Dunn Street 
even if there were a train approaching, they can still make that turn. There's no ability to keep them from doing that. You can put up the signals right now, but you can't put down the crossing arm. There's no room there. So this is, uh, this is the engineered drawing as is. I just uh, present that for you so you can compare that to the next slide, which is the proposed 2B, which you can see would realign Dunn Street uh, kind of cut the corner of that little of not little the the park that's there that takes up half of the half of the block. Um, what that does is it allows a turning radius and space between Dunn Street and North Craven, where we could install the um, traffic arms uh, to prevent someone from turning right on Dunn and then crossing the tracks without hitting a barrier and a warning device. Um, just going back, one of the things you'll see if you focus in on some of the trees we were concerned about, the trees and the, and the vegetation in that park, there's a considerable um, growth there in a, in a good sense. Um, the big oak at the top left, we would be able to maintain, and a bunch of the crepe myrtles along the bottom of the picture uh, of the park, you would be able to maintain, and then we would work with um, the Parks and Rec team to do some re-landscaping as necessary, but one of the trees and, and some, of the, uh, some of the shrubs would have to come out. So this is an actual picture of that corner. The Dunn Street that you see would be offset to your right in that picture. Again, we would move the sign, back the fence up a little bit. You would lose some of that um, vegetation that you see, but the, the big oak to the left we would be able to keep. And then this is another view. This is from Dunn Street. So you can see that's basically where we would uh, realign the street, kind of cut off that corner to allow for the safety improvements. So this would be part of the railroad project, which is really good news. Uh, it would only cost us 10% of the cost of the project, just like the entire uh, Guyon Street and North Railroad crossing signal projects. Um, the we received four bids that we were required to send to the railroad and DOT. They ranged from, and we got them in February, we would have to update them, but they ranged from uh, 42,000 to 69,000. So if you assume the 42,000, our piece would only be a 4,200 of that. We did budget uh, this fiscal year for the matching costs for both projects. Uh, the, the North Craven signal crossings and the um, Guyon Street signal crossing. So hopefully the benefits are obvious. It allows the safety gates instead of the flashing lights. Um, Dunn Street still leaves a large neighborhood park. Um, Matt and I went over there and walked it. I'm sure those of you that are familiar with that area, it is a good sized park. We don't believe we would be impacting um, the, re the citizens' ability to utilize that park significantly. And then it allows for safer travel on Dunn Street approaching the intersection. Um, just so you know as well, the Guyon Street plan, which is a little more straightforward with the arms and the flashing lights, has been approved um, through its whole process. And we're just waiting on them to begin construction for that project. Um, this project is awaiting our agreement to move the road and get that work done. So we didn't want to do that and agree to that without uh, presenting to the board the plan. Any questions on that? Yes, sir. Um, this is uh, obviously in the first ward. I appreciate the efforts of the city manager, assistant city manager, public works director, and others who have worked on this. We started this process about three years ago, um, and I stumbled on it one night about 3.30 in the morning when I came up to that crossing coming north on North Craven. And I'm familiar with the crossing, and there was a large black object parked on the crossing, and it sat there for 12 minutes. Um, someone that uh, <clears throat> is not familiar with it, or someone that might be slightly inebriated, it poses a significant uh, danger. Um, and that danger is inherent in what is carried in those tanker cars. And this particular car had anhydrous ammonia. You don't know what anhydrous ammonia does. When it hits the air, it's invisible. It really doesn't have any odor. But in large quantities, it will kill you. And it would pose a significant hazard to Riverside, downtown, River Station, and keeping in mind that we 
one day we'll have development on that waterfront uh, to the tune of lots of new families, new residences, and whatnot. So that particular picture right there is what I encountered, and you see there's nothing there. It's dark. And it's got rain and hot fog and all that. It's, it's really a hazard. But I've been working on it for some time. Those tracks are Norfolk Southern tracks. They're not North Carolina Railroad, that crossing. Um, but I appreciate the work of Mr. Stevens, City Attorney, Chrissy, and others on the staff to, to work and push this thing through. And, and yes, even Mr. Bobby Astor, who was the fire chief at that time, we initiated this. And he had some contacts that started the ball rolling. And we did even have a round table downstairs in our conference room to bring all the players together, North, Norfolk uh, Southern and North Carolina Railroad, and, uh, and legislative representatives from, from Raleigh. So uh, it's a good project. Chrissy, what's, what's the actual distance we're moving the road over? You know, from Blackson, as I was briefing it, I, I realized that I, I didn't look at that. Matt, do you remember? 20, 25. About 20 feet. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's workable. And, and, and the divot in there in terms of public safety and security is, is important. And we will, as Christy mentioned, Guyon Street Crossing as well, and look at some others in the city to make sure that we're being, we're being safe. So thank you for all the work you've done. Yes, sir. First thing I'd like to know, what is the total cost, not counting out 10%? Total cost for both projects, I believe our match was in the in the fifty thousand dollar range total, so that would put it in the five hundred thousand dollar range for um, basically the cost that we're not having to bear. Okay, and the other thing, the uh, pop. I've never known it to be an accident that occurred there, but that park, or that is a dog park, right? No, sir. Well, I, I've never seen anything out there, but mostly dogs. I go out there sometimes. That's when they used to have their uh, park benches out there. The people would come out there, bring their dogs, and let the dogs run all over the place. Sounds like a good opportunity for us to have a public service announcement. Um, we have one dog park uh, in the city, and that dog park is located at uh, uh, Glen Burnie uh, Park, and it is a feed based uh, yeah, dog park. Back. And uh, regardless of whether we have a park such as Monk Mallard here in this particular location that is uh, fenced in completely, uh, it, you are, uh, citizens are still required to lease their dogs. Um, so allowing your dogs to run around um, and, and play is, is still not uh, technically allowable by ordinance uh, within this park. So just I complained about that park several years ago. And we was talking about building a little shed, and at that same time, we were going to take some money to build uh, some kind of little park. But we turned around and took 22, we're going to build something out by Pleasant Hill. And we turned around and took uh, the money, certain money that we were going to use for Pleasant Hill to use to build a, was it a dog shed or dog something? Uh, nobody here seems to remember that. But at the same time, there was uh, dogs that normally been out there, and the people still take the dogs out there. And that was the only thing that was classified as a dog park. Now, at the Glen, Burn Glen Burnie Park, when you come in on the far left, back in the back, back there, sure, you got a sign up now saying dog park, but people still take their dogs out there to that location where y'all talking. I, I don't have any problem with you doing what you're doing. I just want to know how much it's going to cost, and we 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 plan a little yo-yo game again. Okay, Honorable Mitchell. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, as as someone who moved here nine years ago, I just like to make the comment that if you were a newcomer to this community, um, a lot of the railroad crossings are not clearly marked. You don't see them until you're already on them, and if you've got a train coming, it's too late then. So I would support anything that better marks the crossings and puts the appropriate safety gear um, over there. If it's And, and it, they're hard to see even in daylight. And if it's night and if it's raining, it's a lot harder to see. I think this is a critical safety initiative that we ought to do for the citizens who live here. Okay, any other comments? What do we need? Do we need a motion? Um, essentially, we are looking for um, approval or direction to move forward with 
uh, NCDOT and the railroad on this design and they will s commence their engineering and design work and at that point we'll start at that point once they complete it it will be constructed so okay um, we've already we, we have the, the money budgeted for this particular project as as Ms. Culler said uh, so we're ready to move forward with it as, as long as the plan approval meets uh, the needs uh, of the community and the board's desires. Uh, we just wanted to make you aware of the changes that would occur to our land, the city's land, being the park, um, uh, to accommodate the roadway improvements so that we could uh, have the necessary uh, rail safety devices installed. Mr. Steve, just a quick question. The, the space between the tracks where you're moving the road over, that will still be ours to maintain or, and not North, not uh, Norfolk Southern or North Carolina Railroad, correct? Yeah, we, we would come back and actually probably demo the existing road as it is and green space that. Green space. Yes. Okay. Right. Um, okay, I'd like to make a motion that we direct the staff to move forward to enhancing the safety structures, including the realignment of Dunn Road as second. We have a motion second. Is there a discussion? Let's <clears throat> have a roll call started with Alderman Blackiston. <laughs> Alderman Blackiston? Yes. Alderman Taylor? Yes. Alderman Mitchell? Yes. Mayor Outlaw? Yes. Alderman Kinsey? Yes. Alderman White? Yeah. Alderman Adam? Yes. Motion carries. Item number eight, consider adopting a resolution approving the CDBG environmental review policy and procedures, Mr. Stevens. Thank you, Mayor, members of the board. Uh, 2014, the city became a HUD entitlement city. Uh, at that time, we adopted a five-year consolidation plan. This plan identifies priorities for improving quality of life for low to moderate income individuals. Updates to the policy and procedures for environmental review are needed using the criteria and statutory authority specified within the regulations that HUD provide. Uh, prior to the board considering the adoption of these policies and procedures, Ms. Gaskins is here from Development Services, who's our community development coordinator and she is going to provide us with an update of the past program activity, so she's got a PowerPoint. Um, and also, you will see in your uh, packet of uh, material that uh, we have included the environmental review document uh, uh, with the policies and procedures uh, for your review. But uh, Ms. Gaston is gonna give you a quick overview of uh, the program operations and, and uh, initiatives that we've done through uh, since 2014. All right. Good evening, everyone. Mayor, Alderman, City Manager, City Attorney. Um, it's my pleasure to greet you all this evening. Um, I'm just going to give a brief overview of our program for CDBG. Um, and as the federal statute states that we have to do environmental reviews for every project that we do, whether it is in the office um, or whether we're building a home or we are servicing um, utility assistance, we have to um, document that we did an environmental review. And so just basically as an overview, um, this is the Community Development Block Grant Program and, and it's administered by HUD um, and its goal is to benefit low to moderate income persons, um, prevent elimination of slums or blight, and urgent needs for disasters um, when no other, no other funds are available. So just as Mr. Stevens stated, we did our five-year consolidated plan. And so in those priority needs, um, they were affordable housing, housing rehab, housing development and infrastructure, support for agencies serving the homeless, neighborhood stabilization, public improvements and in infrastructure, permanent supportive housing, um, transformation of the Gateway District, economic development, and job training. So just a brief recap, over the past three years, um, our allocation for the city of New Bern was $774,114. And with that, um, we did minor rehab program. That's our major program, our most needed program. Um, and in that, we did 14 homes throughout the city and we spent $226,555. For public infrastructure, as you will see in the Lawson Creek neighborhood, um, we did a lot of sidewalks um, that are very fancy, very safe. Um, and they are greatly appreciated by the neighborhood. 
affordable housing. Um, with our CDBG program, we have committed to um, construct four new homes in the Gateway District, and our builder for that is Habitat for Humanity. For public services, um, we have provided rental and utility assistance um, for those who are in need. Um, their criteria is that they cannot be serviced um, within two years, so they come once every two years. Um, and they have to be experiencing homelessness or on the verge of being homeless. And then we have identified a new subrecipient um, for mental health and substance abuse services within the city. And for Stanley White, um, that houses so many programs for our community. Um, as you can see, that is our park pavilion. And our sunshades for the kids in this summer has been very hot, so <laughs> um, they greatly appreciate that. And so getting to where our environmental fees come from, um, that's in our administrative costs. And so for three years, we've spent $78,000 for that. And as we discussed at our last meeting, um, our allocation for this year, upcoming up year, is $223,934. And that breakdown that we discussed was $128,000 for our most needed housing rehab program, $25,154 for public services, $10,000 for capacity building, $400, $44,780 for administration and um, adding a new house to our affordable housing construction. So within those projects, we are required as staff um, to have those environmental reviews done. And so that manual that you have in front of you all is a step-by-step -step guide that anyone can come <coughs> in and look and see how to do the environmental review. Um, we have our um, Region 4 environmental rep for HUD come and look at our policies and he thought they were great and he said Newburn is doing a really good job and he suggested the manual so anyone can come in and look. So that is what you see before you today. Board has questions, yes sir. Thank you for a job well done and um, have you started planning, setting your goals for next year to add maybe five or six more houses. Would you share a little bit of that with us, what your goals are for next year? Gotcha, so every year we are required to do public hearings and public listening sessions. So what we go out is we put out flyers to over 70 agencies. We do the community. Last year, past two years, we've done Stanley White Recreation Center. We do um, comment periods in the um, newspaper to get that feedback to tell that's what we're required to do. And so actually we decided to put one more house on because that was needed in our um, public listening session. So that's how we added that to this year's goals. And so every year we're required to do that um, and get feedback for our plan for next year. So that's how we shape our goals and, and we look at what's needed. And so how many houses that we have for rehab, you know, I get calls at least almost eight a week asking for that program. And so that's how we do the justification of how much money we allot to that program as well. Thank you. The board have questions? I have one. Yes, sir. With the program and the things that you, that y'all have done, the people that have talked to me, they, they really appreciate it. Thank you. They a wonderful job and uh, some of them seemed very happy to know that they were on that list. I didn't know that was on the list. Stop me in the middle of the street, <laughs> passing through. So I appreciate all that you do. Okay. Well, you know how I feel about you all. I don't have to say. <laughs> uh, without that, yeah, if you know any more questions, I'd like to make a motion. I'd like to make a motion that we adopt the resolution approving the CDBG environmental review policy and procedure. Second. Motion by Alderman Taylor, seconded by Alderman Mitchell. Is there further discussion? <laughs> Seeing none, let's have a roll call starting with Alderman Odom. Alderman Odom? Yes. Alderman White? Yes. Alderman Kinsey? Yes. Mayor Outlaw? Yes. Alderman Mitchell? Yes. 
Alderman Taylor? Yes. Alderman Blackiston? Yes. Okay, the motion carries. I, I number nine, consider adopting a resolution initiating the upset bid process for 1114 Williams Street, Mr. Stevens. Thank you, Mayor, members of the board. LeVon Carter has offered $1,500 for the purchase of 1114 Williams Street. The parcel is a vacant lot that's owned jointly by Craven County, uh, Craven County and the city. Uh, the tax value is $4,000, and the offer represents 37.5% of this value. If the offer is accepted and then no other bids are received, the property will be sold uh, at this initial offer, and the city is estimated to receive $205, uh, and the county would receive approximately $1,295. There's a memo that's included in your packet, uh, as well as a property tax card and a map, and we're happy to answer any questions you may have. Does the board have questions? No. I'd like to make a motion. Motion that we adopt the resolution initiating the upset bid process for level 14 White William Street. Second. Motion by Alderman, Alderman White, seconded by Alderman Kinsey. Is there further discussion? Seeing none, let's have a roll call starting with Alderman Blackiston. Alderman Blackiston? Yes. Alderman Taylor? Yes. Alderman Mitchell? Yes. Mayor Outlaw? Yes. Alderman Kinsey? Yes. Alderman White? Yes. Alderman Odom? Yes. Motion carries. Item number 10, consider adopting a resolution approving a lease agreement with Religious Community Services for 503 Guyon Street, Mr. Stevens. Thank you, members of, uh, Mayor and members of the board. Uh, as you recall, a little over a month ago at our uh, July the 11th meeting, uh, the board um, was brought a renewed uh, agreement of lease with religious community services uh, that was a lease that expired it was for the property that's located at 503 Guyon Street uh, at that time uh, the uh, proposed lease agreement terms were for one year um, and uh, at that time uh, Mr. Davis uh, I did notified at the end of the meeting that um, being that it was a lease agreement that the board chose to extend to a three-year lease agreement with one uh, or I'm sorry, with two one-year extensions, that that would need to be publicly noticed uh, and brought back before the board for approval. So this is uh, something administratively that we've handled. You already approved, uh, I guess in, in theory, you've already approved that uh, at your previous meeting. But tonight, uh, this is the actual fiscal lease agreement uh, that has been revised and it's been provided to uh, have the terms that you agreed to uh, at the July 11th meeting. So that basically would be a three-year initial term with two one-year optional extension years uh, for a dollar a year at that uh, under those terms. Mayor, all members of the board, for no questions, I'd like to make a motion we adopt a resolution approving a lease agreement with the Religious Community Services for 503 Guyon Street. Second. Okay. Uh, motion by Alderman Blackson, seconded by Alderman Taylor. Alderman Taylor, did you have a question or comment? No, sir. No, sir. <clears throat> Is there further questions or comments? This time, let's have a roll call starting with Alderman Odom. Alderman Odom? Yes. <clears throat> Alderman White? Yes. Alderman Kinsey? Yes. Mayor Outlaw? Yes. Alderman Mitchell? Yes. Alderman Taylor? Yes. Alderman Blackiston? Yes. Motion carries. Item number 11. Consider adopting a resolution approving a lease agreement for 2303 Oaks Road, Mr. Stevens. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, this lease agreement is for a property that's located at 2303 Oaks Road. It's owned by the city and is bound by FEMA restrictions that prohibit any kind of future development on the lot. Um, in an effort to reduce the cost and labor associated with the city maintaining these lots, uh, staff has negotiated a 10-year lease with the adjacent property owners, Norman and Mary Ann Morris. Uh, the lease restricts the property to recreation and or, and or open space use and requires that the lessor uh, maintain the property. Um, the agreement is, like I said, for an initial 10-year term. It uh, would have to be renewed after that. It's for a dollar per year. Uh, this agreement is very similar to one that you uh, did some time ago that uh, in 2015 for a lot that was located on North Hills Drive, 1504 North Hills Drive. You would probably recall that. Um, there's a memo that's included in your packet from Mr. Montaigne, and we'll answer any kind of questions that you may have. Or have questions. No questions. I'd like to make a motion. I'd like to make a motion to approve the use of the use and maintain lease agreement between the city of New Bern and Norman Mars and wife Mary Ann Mars for, for the property located at 2303 Oaks Road and 
owner owned by the city of New Rome. Okay. And you have a second from, from Alderman Kinsey. Is there further questions, comments? Let's have a roll call, starting with Alderman Blackiston. Alderman Blackiston? Yes. Alderman Taylor? Yes. Alderman Mitchell? Yes. Mayor Outlaw? Yes. Alderman Kinsey? Yes. Alderman White? Yes. Alderman Odom? Yes. Motion carries. Number 12, consider adopting a resolution approving a school resource officer contract. Mr. Stevens. Thank you, uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, the Craven County Board of Education desires to contract with the City of Newburn Police Department to provide school resource officers at Newburn High School, Grover C. Fields Middle School, and H.J. McDonald Middle School uh, for the 2017-18 school year. Uh, the contract will be backdated effective to July 1st, 2017, and provides uh, for, in part, uh, for the Board of Education to pay uh, the city $38,975 per school resource officer to offset the cost of salaries and benefits for that officer being at their facility. Um, I will say that uh, I did have a meeting with Dr. Dole just recently uh, with regards to this amount and uh, we are going to sit down sometime here in the fall uh, prior to the upcoming budget year, myself and the county manager and the city manager from Havelock who they also contract with. Uh, the sheriff's office and city of Havelock Police Department and uh, potentially look at this number and see if it needs to be adjusted for the upcoming, uh, that would be the 18-19 school year. So, uh, but it is, at this time, this uh, particular uh, contract will be for the 17-18 school year, effective July 1, for $38,975 per officer. Um, Mr. Stevens, say again, how many officers does this involve? I, I believe it's three four four officers four officers and during the off season when school is not in session they are included back into regular duties That's as correct. line officers yep. they, they they do assigned work as uh, as deemed necessary by the police department uh, for other assigned duties within the city so yes sir the, the question I have is how does that impact our overall numbers of sworn officers that are available for routine duties I probably would refer to that to uh, the chief to answer. Um, I would imagine that we, we account for that in our in our day to day operations. Um, there's obvious value for us to have these uh, these school resource officers in the schools because number one, the kids get to know them, they get to know the kids, they get the inside track on things that are going on. But uh, we do uh, it does not impact our actual beat patrol officer uh, numbers from what my and if, if you notice some of your monthly reports that we get large amount of calls at especially the high school so with the school resource officer being there it negates an officer from the street responding so that's, that's good I guess I guess my question is, is along these lines if if the school system is paying for these officers and they're counted within our authorized limit of sworn officers true correct okay so in effect uh, we don't have 87 88 89 89, but we don't actually have 89 that are available. We have 85 that would be available correct. for our use during normal operations, correct? You? For, for nine tenths, for nine, for nine, nine months, yes. Nine sir. months, right, is that okay? Thank you. Um, questions? Yes. Um, I don't have a question. If there are no other questions from the board, I would like to make a motion that we approve the school resource officer contract with the Craven Board of. Craven County Board of Education. Second. <coughs> Motion by Alderman Mitchell, seconded by Alderman Black. As soon as there are questions or comments, let's have a roll call starting with Alderman Odom. Alderman Odom? Yes. Alderman White? Yes. Alderman Kinsey? Yes. Mayor Outlaw? Yes. Alderman Mitchell? Yes. Alderman Taylor? Yes. Alderman Blackiston? Yes. Item number 13, consider adopting a budget ordinance amendment for the 2017 operating budget, Mr. Stevens. Thank you, Mayor. Several purchase orders uh, from the fiscal year 16-17 that we closed out in uh, June 30 uh, remained open, and this budget ordinance amendment will extend those purchase orders into this current fiscal year, which is 17-18. Uh, it also provides for an advance repayment of an installment purchase loan uh, and transfer funds uh, within the Parks and Recreation organizations uh, to take care of uh, a couple of items that we needed to address. Um, the repayment uh, that we talked about on the, a particular loan uh, will be uh, distributed over across several different funds. Actually, um, it's, it's through the uh, water fund, um, 
primarily in sewer funds uh, as well as the general fund and MSD. Uh, a significant portion of, uh, or not, not a very significant portion of that coming from uh, the general fund balance. So uh, we're happy to answer any kind of questions that you may have, but ultimately uh, repayment of this, uh, um, early payment of this loan will save the city uh, approximately, I think it was $35,000, is that correct, Jay? Thir approximately $35,000 in interest payments. Or have questions? Yes, sir. I have a question uh, directly to the uh, city manager. I, I see there's a decrease in the park and recreation. I can understand because somebody's not there. But uh, the reason I'm asking this question is because of something that I've been totally dedicated to for uh, over 40 years of making sure that we had an accredited recreation department as far as uh, sports like football. And I'm, I'm getting a rumor that they may not have a football team or whatever. I mean, I, I, I like to know if somebody can tell me why not. Um, we don't have a football team. I'm going to try to answer the best that I can. Um, uh, Pop Warner uh, requires uh, a certain amount of kids to meet the criteria to, to field a team. I think it's 14. Um, there were two age levels, um, and there were 10 kids that signed up for each of those age levels. Um, we had significant discussions with uh, Pop Warner to try to extend our period uh, so that we could potentially find other kids to fill that void. Uh, but um, essentially, it comes down to a being able to fill the numbers uh, out there. Uh, so we had 10 on one team, 10 on another, and they require a minimum of 14 to be able to 16, I'm sorry, 16 to be able to, uh, uh, to field 18. Uh, so that's the problem we ran into. So yes, uh, my understanding is, is there will not, not be a Pop Warner uh, football this year. And those are the requirements of Pop Warner. I, I know the rules are probably better than anybody in here. You know, I know the qualifications, I know the coverage and everything you have to go through in order to, even for the kid to play. I did all my paperwork. I don't ask somebody to do it for me. And uh, the thing is that this is this is our uh, this is very terrible. Y'all gonna see this in, in the future if you don't straighten it out. I mean, I'm not. People have been asking me for years to come back and coach, but I don't plan on going back coaching. Some one of the best coaches you you ever had. He he resigned a couple of years ago, and. You're going to start seeing that, so that, that's that's not a good thing. Even if, even the baseball, we have a super baseball league, but yet can't get the grown people to come out like they're supposed to and, and start coaching the kids. I'm not at that point where I want to be out there doing it constantly. But I'm just saying, if if you want to have a good team, you're going to have to have quality of coaching, and you have to start that off. If you don't start it off, you can forget about it. And I think it's uh, very unfortunate that we um, aren't able to field teams this year. Um, moving forward, I think it's probably appropriate for us to, and I've already talked with uh, uh, Mr. Montaigne about this, is to um, uh, put together uh, and put forth a, a more robust advertisement effort to try to make sure that we can make that happen. Uh, because uh, um, whether that's putting out more signage, whether that's uh, taking out more ads in the paper, to me, um, that's probably money well spent uh, in, in an effort to uh, uh, have uh, kids in our in our facilities and utilizing our programs. Uh, so at that point, I think we'll probably try to do something a little more robust for next year as far as advertising and try to get kids uh, signed up and involved with our pop Uh Question. Mr. Stevens, and maybe uh, Mr. Montaigne can answer this or others. Um, I, I know that we're, we're kind of in a little in between here in terms of uh, parks and rec program direction, but <clears throat> are we seeing are we seeing a <clears throat> a change in movement with kids to other, playing other sports in that age group, whether it be soccer or other activities? I, I think you definitely have um, a diversification of offerings uh, here. Uh, obviously, 
uh, between soccer and lacrosse and swimming and basketball and football and baseball. And it really becomes, I can tell you as a parent, it uh, becomes more of a time thing too. Um, and I think what we've got to do is, is um, uh, as I just mentioned, uh, try to increase our efforts as far as uh, advertising these and trying to get uh, teams staffed. Uh, but ultimately, you know, it comes down to meeting the criteria of whatever we're joining. If it's Pop Warner, we're going to be doing Pop Warner football. Uh, then we've obviously uh, got to advertise that. You know, the, 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 the means and ways of people reading a paper to find advertisements is probably uh, something that has kind of waned as well. So we've got to look at other engaging opportunities to, to get the, the word out there, whether that's through <coughs> social media, which I know we did. I know there were some advertisements through our social media outlets on the Pop Warner signups, but uh, we probably need to, to start those a little sooner. Um, and uh, obviously, uh, if we're having these kind of problems, you know, get, get more word out there, whether that's flyers, whether that's posters, whatever it may be. Uh, I think that's one of the things that we can address internally uh, from a staff perspective. How about working through the, uh, the school system? Is that something that we've done, uh, pursued, or tried to work with them? I mean, we, we definitely could do that. The unfortunate thing about football is, you know, you, if you do that, you've got to make sure you have your flyers out ready to go before the end of the school year because obviously you're dealing with summer. Uh, and the summer signups uh, is typically whenever Pop Warner football, when the signups are occurring, is during the summer when kids are out of school. So that poses a little bit more of, a, of an issue. Uh, but uh, we, we definitely could do that if the information is available for us to have at that time and, and, and to be able to distribute. Question for Alderman White. Do the kids that play at this level, this age group, are, are they required to have some sort of medical certificate or physicals for that? that, that everybody that plays in Park Warner has to have a physical. Has to have a physical. You, you have to have a physical, and uh, if there's something wrong with them, they have to go to, to, the, to their doctor. And, and in order for them to be able to play, you have to get permission from their doctor other than their parent. If their parents say they can play and something physically wrong with them, they still might not be able to play because of the doctor. But as you were talking about, what we normally do every year in June, we put out flowers or we get the kids before they go back. And the, the thing is probably, probably the main problem probably now is whatever they had the following year, I would keep my roster. I know who I'm losing. The other coaches would do the same thing. We make calls and we send it, send it out months in advance. Okay, then we wait for those kids because on August the 1st, I think it's August the 1st, is when you start registering, registering kids to play, you know. And we normally have all that down, so we, we have a great group of guys here in, in New Bern and the surrounding areas. If we want to have a uh, super football team in New Bern, we have to maintain that status. If we don't maintain that status, you can forget about it. And I think what happened, the coaches that, are, that were there, some people follow their kids. Well, I, I stayed, I never, I didn't really follow my kid when he went to high school. I, I went to the games, but I, I didn't, just cause he, playing high school ball, I'm going to go there and watch it practice. And I, I, I don't know about the other coaches, but I don't prove a, a person just following their kid and then coming out there trying to tell me how to coach. Let the, coach, let, let the coaches handle their job. You deal with your kid when you go home or whatever. Just give him some encouragement, but, but make sure you listen. If he's looking at the coach and then he's looking at you and you tell him something and he do what you tell him to do and not what I tell him to do, I send him to the sideline. He's no good to me on the field if he just listens to his parents. That's a team out there. They have to work as a team. New Bern High has a good group of guys, and they work as a team. You know, and I'm, I'm not partial, that much partial against New Bern High, um, West Craven. I have a lot. I want, both. I want them all to win. I want every, everybody to know it in order for, and I said it, in order for any team to go through or get to the championship, they got to go through one of those three teams. If you beat New Bern, Havelock, and, and West Craven, then you, you're championship quality. Everybody knows that. And it's about just keeping, <clears throat> keeping everybody up, you know. So let's, I've spent enough time on that. So I, I, I make a promise whether I'm here or not, that next year they will have a, a team. And when I first started, when I, I got my team, I, I started from standing away. And when he passed on, I didn't know I was going to lay on, come and pick that up. So I picked it up. I put that team under that, that organization over there. I put them under that. 
and there was a team to be reckoned with. We couldn't get a second team. I don't care how we tried, we couldn't get a second team until I went to uh, Craven Bears. And I went to Craven Bears because of my smaller kid. I wasn't gonna let him sit two years out. I took him over there. Then I came down here and asked for some money for Craven Bears. They gave me money to stand away. I had no problem with that. That's how Stan White got his second team. Yet we still wind up with a second team and we wind up with a third team for the Craven Bears. Uh, those teams, and it seemed like when I leave, leave a team or don't stay with them long, all of a sudden it just falls. Come on, we can do better than that. I know you can. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions, comments? Mayor, I like the motion we adopt the budget ordinance amendment for the FY 17 18 operating budget. Second. Uh, motion by Alderman Odom, seconded by Alderman Mitchell. Is there further discussion? Let's have a roll call starting with Alderman Blackiston. Alderman Blackiston? Yes. Alderman Taylor? Yes. Alderman Mitchell? Yes. Mayor Outlaw? Yes. Alderman Kinsey? Yes. Alderman White? Yes. Alderman Odom? Yes. Motion carries appointment starting with Alderman Blackiston. None, sir. Alderman Taylor? I don't have a appointment at the moment, sir, but I'm, I am recruiting, and I'm going to read very quickly the qualification. It is for a member for the Board of Adjustments. Uh, the member must be able to will, able and willing to commit the necessary time and energy to carry out the responsibilities required for the position and must attend approximately two-hour meeting for the last Monday on the last Monday night of each month, the board made the responsibility of granted, granting variances, appeals, and special use permits. Members must have the ability to read and understand complex land ownership and development issues. If you are interested in being appointed to the Board of Adjustments and uh, meet those qualifications, minimum qualifications, please, do not hesitate to give me a call, 639-0451, or contact the city clerk. Thank you very much. That's all I have. Okay, Alderman Mitchell. I don't have anything. Alderman no. Kenzie. Yes, I have an appointment. Uh, the name is uh, Edward. Uh, Brenda, could you help me pronounce this guy's last yes. name? Yes, Bellis. Bellis. Um, that's my appointment for tonight. Board of Justice. For the Board of Justice. Uh -huh. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All opposed say. Do you have any more? No, that's it, sir. Alderman White? No. Alderman Odom? None, sir. Okay, at this time, uh, we'll go to the uh, attorney's report. Nothing to report tonight, Mayor. City manager's report. Uh, three quick things, uh, Mayor, if you don't mind, and board. Uh, property tax bills were mailed out today by Craven County, so just wanted to make sure you're aware of that and that the citizens. Uh, we'll be receiving those. Uh, those will be due for January. Uh, on September the 22nd, Craven County will host Leadership Forum. Hopefully I'm not stealing someone's thunder here. This is a Leadership Forum that's on opioid abuse. It is from 8.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. at the Convention Center. Uh, the, there's a significant portion of the board, if not all of the board, who uh, desires to participate in this. And, and because of your participation, it is uh, required that we serve uh, this particular ad, uh, uh, item here as the notice that you're going to be having an official meeting because you're going to be participating. Um, so this is a meeting that is open to the public um, and just wanted to make sure you're aware of that and that this is the official notice of, of this board convening on the 22nd of September from 8.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. at the convention center. So uh, what uh, are going to be there? Motion. Yes. Um, Mr. Stevens, Mr. Stevens, do we have to sit together? Uh, if it's an official meeting, then yes, you can sit together, and you will need to make yeah. a motion in the second. On this. So moved. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 So you can get an eye down there, buddy. Aye. Yeah. Yes. Just a question on that. As far as record keeping for that meeting, um, are we going to be required to keep minutes and open and close that meeting? Yes, yes, absolutely. Anytime you have a meeting, it's required. Um, so probably be wise for us to have a clerk attend as well with y'all so that she can be there. Right there. Thank you. So this, in essence, would be almost a joint meeting with the county commissioner? Essentially, yes. 
other cities, other municipalities in Craven County have been invited to attend too. And they're planning to have a seating arrangement for all of the elected officials to sit together. It's very important. Did we do that once? Mm -hmm. Was that similar to what they had down the riverfront? A while back when they had everybody in, different uh, commissioners, all of us packed in there. I don't know since I wasn't there. Yeah, but they're planning to have you yeah. sit up front yeah. of the audience. Um, that motion passed, everybody's good, okay. Um, and the final thing that I have, as part of the 40th anniversary of the Mountains to Sea Trail, uh, the State Parks Division and the Friends of the Mountain Sea Trail will be walking the entire length, 700 miles of the trail that has been completed of the nearly 1,200 miles that is necessary to complete the entire portion. Uh, the walk will take place in segments on September the 9th, 2017. Uh, there is a segment of that here in Newburn that we recently approved uh, from Council Bluffs to Leander Morgan Park that will be included in this walk. Um, that walk will start at approximately 3 p.m. and will be walked by uh, Smith Rayner, who is the state trails planner, Carolyn Tingley, uh, who is the deputy director for North Carolina State Parks, and Sarah Kuntz, uh, an archivist and director of the Division of Archives and Records. Um, they are also inviting staff and the public to join in on the walk and any of the board who wish to participate. So I just want to make sure you're aware of that. Yeah. That's all I have. Thank you. Okay. Um, at this time, uh, let's see. We have new business starting with Alderman Blackiston. Yes, sir. Um, we have uh, been in contact with uh, Allies for Cherry Points tomorrow, um, upcoming event fundraiser that we attended last year and supported Sea to Table on the 7th of September. Um, I would ask for, I have six tickets, individual tickets, um, and in concert with that, what I would ask is that we provide a $500 um, table sponsorship as a half a table, um, but I know that we would like to make sure how many folks are going to be in attendance. I'll be, I'll, I'll be, I'll be there. Probably there. So that's three. Who else? It's the same event down Mogan? Yes. I plan on being there. Okay, that's four. Is that uh, I think I've got mm -hmm. okay. Well, I've got tickets too, so we'll work out. We'll, we'll do at least 500 and we'll have some individual tickets. Hey, you, you made a motion on the 500 bucks. $500 do to support for tickets. We have a second on that. Second. <laughs> motion and a second. All in favor of the motion to say aye. 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 All opposed, same. Aye. Yes, sir. Another item. Um, there has been a lot of. Uh, information passed, a lot of concern expressed about the Airbnb um, activity within the city and most particularly within the historic downtown historic district. Um, I've asked the mayor to basically have us appoint a three-member board committee to study and oversee uh, issues and any recommendations that may be put forward to, to basically monitor that activity. I've also reached out to the North Carolina School of Government for a legal consultant specialist to assist us in framing the issue and protect the interest of all parties, that's everyone, uh, all interests, so that we can move forward on this, recognizing that other communities as well as the state level, there have been very, a lot, a lot of give and take on it. Um, also discussed with the mayor about reaching out to the North Carolina League of Municipalities to build some sort of informal or formal coalition to address the issues that they have encountered uh, around the state and share any ideas uh, that we can move forward with, as well as perhaps send a letter to our General Assembly representatives to get some better clarification over the direction that the General Assembly wants to take on this going forward in the future. Yeah. Okay. Do you have volunteers to serve on that committee with me? I will. Okay. Yeah, you might as well serve on that. Come here. Uh, okay. Yes. Okay. Three. I that. and that's that's really all happened. Uh, appreciate your leadership on that. I know that so many times we struggle with state and federal mandates that we feel like that the hardships been being placed on us. And this time we're 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 kind of looking at the state to give us some means of guidance on this. But uh, I, I like your idea about the council, and uh, we can also, Mr. Stevens, uh, include the metro mayors uh, in that discussion because they're very active on issues like this. Yes, sir. 
Just one other item to, to mention, and that is the, um, the item that was in our consent agenda concerning the Mumfest of um, House Point Commons and, and specific streets. Um, I do want to say that the Swiss Bear has worked uh, with staff in the planning iterations that they've gone through, and the director has been very good about communicating with me and discussing those issues as it moved towards uh, month best this year this fall. I appreciate that. Um, and I don't know if this would be our place, but would the, the director want to give us any cursory updates on where month best is and what it will be? Or would you rather do that at another meeting, or would you like to come up and give us some, some public uh, information about month best? We're, we are, thank you for asking me to come and do this, Mr. Mayor. Um, I, we have completed all of our um, entertainment lineup for Mumfest, and so we have a lot of really great talent coming in in terms of street buskers, and in terms of musicians as well. Um, the real concern over the street closures around Palace Point Commons, Eden Street, Metcalf and South Front Street really center around the concert that we're having that evening. We have um, some very good talent that's coming into New Bern for, for that Mumfest kickoff concert. A country music artist is headlining. His name is Brett Young. He currently has two songs in the top 50 charts. Um, uh, so we've got a number four hit and a number 34 hit. So we're expecting a good crowd. And then in addition to that, we've also been able to um, to book uh, a woman named uh, Danielle Bradbury, who is the season four winner of The Voice. So we have uh, a strong lineup. We're expecting a number of people. We have a lot of concern for the people who live in that area, wanting to make sure that um, they have easy access in and out of their homes during the course of that concert. If they choose not to attend the concert, um, also want to make sure that we have all the public safety concerns um, addressed. We've been meeting with um, staff on security, with, with security um, with, the, with the police, and with also security at Tryon Palace and staff at Tryon Palace. Palace has been kind enough to allow us to be able to start having people come onto the South Lawn for that concert at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. We have a lot of issues that we will be dealing with that evening. We are trying to deal with those issues with great sensitivity and concern for public safety, not just because of the concert, but because of load-in of all the vendors that will be taking place at the same time that this concert is also taking place. So we appreciate the support that we've been receiving from all of the departments within the city um, and your support as well as we're trying to negotiate our way through through that weekend. But um, we have a great lineup of people coming in. It's going to be um, a, a good weekend. The weather is going to be wonderful and um, we're looking forward to it. So thank you. Thank you, Lynn. Everything else, sir? Okay, Alderman Taylor. Yes, sir, I do have a few items. Uh, get your pens out. Councilors and ready. Um, this past weekend, the 12th of August, we had a over-the-counter medication giveaway, a huge success. Uh, my numbers are 1,700 people. Stanley White have never seen that many people. We get about almost 1,000 people through the door and about 600 that was sick and shut in. So we did about 1,700 people total. Uh, thank the city manager. He was dressed on Friday, and he was dressed on Saturday. Saturday, he came in his workout clothes. Uh, he was sweeping uh, the floor with a coffee cup in one hand and a broom in the other hand. He was moving around uh, extremely uh, agile. He, he did a great job. I thank Alderman Kinsey, Alderman White for an outstanding job. Uh, NC Medicis came down. They were so thrilled of how we had it set up, put together. They just sat back and just pointed a couple of times, but they said we had it together. And I told them this is how New Bern does it. But the overall, we had a special guest to come out. Uh, James Bone Crusher Smith, a former heavyweight champion of the world, came out to this event. That's how huge this event was. This was a huge event. This, they said this is one of the events that they came to that they had to do the least amount of work. They came in, felt right in place, took it over. Even though anticipated rain, we had a little rain, but almost a thousand people coming through Standard White within about four hours time, huge success. We had about 200 volunteers. 
And if it was the rain, forecast for rain, I think we'd have close to 3,000 people come through. We targeted Craven Jones and Pamico, very much needed. Uh, the utility business office came through, supported 100%. Thanks to our RAS team, Steve and Jackie. Outstanding, I can't say anymore, outstanding. We will be doing it again next year, hopefully. God's will. All right, next, this weekend here, the 26th of August, our uh, Vision 4 group will be doing the Information Awareness Forum. We've been doing this event for 11 years. This event is to inform kids how to succeed in various career fields, lawyers, doctors, engineers, military, sports, and all those fields. We'll have somebody out to have three, city managers to have three things in their mind, city attorney. What made them want to be an attorney? What courses did they take in school to be an attorney? And how they avoided the street life. Even though New Bern is small, it still has a street life that can take them down. So uh, we want to have those three things. Uh, Chief Boyd, Chief Summers, um, i love for you all to come out as usual. They do a great job. So this weekend, Stanley, uh, Big Field, Craven Terriers, Information Awareness and Fun Day. Uh, Chief, we will have the horses out, so we may maybe get one of you two on the horse for a photo op. Thank you. Um, so please come out, bring your kids out. Adults have a great time as well. Um, this, this Saturday from 9 to 3, Big Field, Craven Terriers. Also, I'm a really, very busy guy. Um, 16 September, we're doing a prostate a cancer awareness motorcycle ride. This is our fifth year of doing this. It leads from New Bern, goes to Jacksonville, pick up more riders, leave Jacksonville, goes to Richland, pick up more riders, leave Richland, goes to Kenson, pick up more riders, and come back to New Bern and stop in Lawson Creek Park and have a fellowship luncheon. The funds that's raised will be given to Journey of Hope, it used to be Man to Man Cancer Group, for the prostate research. So that's the 16th. On the 23rd of September, myself, your craving urologist, Dr. Stewart, Dr. Whitmore, Dr. Walls, Dr. Dope, we will be doing, again, since 1999, a free prostate screening for all Craven, Jones, and Pamico residents, men over the age of 40 to 75. So please write those dates down. I will be talking about it again at each meeting. Um, on on the, uh, the bike ride, is that going to start out at 37 37 15 miles of the game, the old Joe Alco, we keep it the old car. Again. And what time is that going to Kick leave? stands up will be at 11 a.m. 11 a.m. Mm -hmm. And on the um, the other one, that's going to be at the... at the. It's going to, this year's change is going to be at the Urology Center, 705 Newman <clears throat> Road. 705 what? Newman. Newman. Mm -hmm. And that's at what time? 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. If you want to see a crowd of folks come out there to that one now, you'll have... 300 people. Yes. Last one we did, we did 250 men that came through in three hours' time. Okay. That's a lot of screening. So, again, hey, thank you very much. Thanks for all you're doing. Audubon Mitchell. Just one thing, and this is for Public Works tonight. I've had a number of questions from constituents over why, when they tore up Front Road to redo the, the pipes underneath it, why did they leave and leave all the potholes that are still there? If that's something that uh, street maintenance could look at and see if we could address those issues. I'd appreciate it. That's well, I, I mean, I want to I want to rub, uh, rub that a little bit. Um, best I remember, we from like Malkenberg Lane out to 17 paid that, and then from um, somewhere around Southgate back <coughs> to Simmons Street, we paid, and they purposely did not pay that portion until those culverts were changed out. And so are they due to be finished up by DOT? That's the remaining portion that needs to be reached. So that would probably probably be where your, your potholes are. So, uh, and what's the timeline on that? Yeah. Um, I, I'd have to ask. Start okay. to check into it and contact DOT and get back with you. Hey, nice. Anything else? Yeah. Alderman Kenzie. Not at this time, sir. Alderman White. I have two things. Uh, one, uh, Alderman uh, Taylor, I appreciate the work that you do, and that was an excellent event. And a lot of people benefited from it. Some of the people that I know that are older, they told me they were glad I came by and told them about that. And then I had a chance to meet Bone Crusher on the way out, 
a lot of people don't know Bone Crusher, but I, I'm a former boxer and I used to keep up with, with all that. And when I, when I went to him, I said something that somebody said, you, you better not say that to Bone Crusher. So I went over there and said it, and that's when he fought Mike Tyson. And uh, I, thought, I felt like he had Mike Tyson, would have been able to knock Mike Tyson out. He just didn't throw that other blow. But at the same time, uh, by meeting him, I have two people here in New Bern, and I'm trying to get them. They, they box him, but they go different places. They go to Durham, certain places. This young man went somewhere, and they wouldn't let him fight. They wanted, him, wanted him to pay to even get in the ring. And another place he'd been that they wouldn't let him fight. He's just that good. So by me getting up with a bone crusher, so that's when I supposed to contact bone crusher. And he's supposed to try to set up something for this young man. And the other event that I was going to talk about, man, I got hooked on that and forgot what I was talking about. Next. Well, if you think about it, we'll come back to you. You want to do that? Next. Go ahead. Go ahead, all of them. Uh, Yes, sir, Mayor. Just one comment. I was um, attending an expo today in Raleigh for um, lodging and restaurant. And um, happened to be walking around, and I noticed it was an electricity's booth. So I stopped to talk to the gentleman there, and they had a, a display out front that had some brochures for several of the cities that they represented. It was a retail strategies brochure. He had Kinston, and Aden, and all these different cities. He didn't have one for Newburn, so I started to give him a little bit, a little bit of grief about it. And he told me, he said, "I'm going to be honest with you." He said, "Newburn doesn't need it." He said, uh, "You have a, a excellent staff that does more than what this program could do for you." Um, they did offer uh, their assistance on some upcoming projects that we're looking into, but um, he's the gentleman specifically mentioned Cindy Bott and Carl Toller, so I want to let you know that uh, you're at least famous in the Raleigh market anyway, but I uh, appreciate your efforts, and uh, he just said that nothing but rave reviews for Newburn and, and all the retail that's growing on here, so that's all, sir. I, I thought of it. Uh, okay. What I was going to say, we used to have a, a recreation advisory board. The Recreation Advisory Board kept the city abreast of certain things that it could use or that would be beneficial to it. And our, that Recreation Advisory Board would also be involved in some of our activities or some of the sports events that we had dealing with the youth. And when I was on that board, we also had our Newburn High, two students from Newburn High incorporated into that board. So we would have an idea of what some of the youth wanted to do. And so that's that's what I want to say. Okay. Uh, yes, sir. One other thing, just remember, uh, DOT has been working closely with uh, uh, the Public Works Director and I, especially on the Glen Burnie Road with the two inches of rains we've been having, because pine straw are beginning to come down pretty heavy now, and they've been coming through cleaning the drains because on Glen Burnie Road, it floods real bad. So they have been really working closely with us to make sure that that is being taken care of. And thanks to Mr. Martin for doing that. Okay. Okay, any other uh, new business at this time? Uh, do we need a closed session tonight? No, ma'am. Uh, any other business to come before the Newman Board of Aldermen at this time? Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion by Alderman Owen, second by Alderman Mitchell. All in favor, motion to say aye. 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 All opposed, same. Motion carries.